Yes. Okay, great. Um, well, welcome everybody. Thanks for for uh, for coming and joining us uh, tonight. Um, so my name is Perry C. Addison from St. Demetrius in Libertyville. Um, we're gonna we're gonna have a packed agenda tonight, um, but we're gonna have several moments of conversation, hopefully. And and so we'll we'll I'll keep my uh, my talk here short, but I'll walk you through the the metropolis definition of stewardship. We do that at every meeting, just to remind um, everybody when we talk about stewardship, what we're talking about, because a lot of times people have a certain perception of what that is. Um, and then the team, we're gonna go around, um, several people uh, on the call will be participating with me, but we're gonna, we're gonna talk at a high level about the three principles of stewardship that we spent last year kind of deep diving on, ownership, engagement, and gen generosity. We're gonna do a review of them, what they are, some of the key key uh, themes of the key elements. And then we're gonna talk about, um, we're gonna do some group sharing on um, goals. And and some of the parishes last year uh, took on goals. We'd, we'd love to hear how those went. We'd love to hear ideas for your goals for, for this year. And, and in that sharing, hopefully, um, you know, other parishes will have ideas for goals moving forward. And then um, we're going to spend a, a few minutes also talking about what you would like us to focus on in 2024. Get your ideas. Um, you know, are there particular topics um, that we've covered that you'd like to do deeper dives on? Are there particular areas we haven't covered that you'd like to talk about? Um, so we'd love to just get your your ideas um, for the future. So that's, that's the agenda. So Stewardship, um, the, the definition that the Metropolis team put together um, very thoughtfully now a, a few years ago of stewardship is it's our grateful and loving response to God's love, grace, and gifts to us. It's our personal commitment to God and his church to ensure its vitality and continuous growth by joyfully and sacrificially offering of our talents, time, and treasures that we have received from him. Stewardship puts our faith in action and demonstrates our trust in God. And the important aspect of this is, you know, we talk a lot about stewardship. Uh, people have a perception that stewardship is about money. And of course, money is an aspect of, of you know, being a steward in a parish. But it's, it's also about joyfully and sacrificially offering our talents and time. It's about thinking about, about stewardship from the idea that God has give, given us all of these talents, these t this time and treasure, and it's how do we take care of it and and give it back to him and and to those in need. So that's that's the idea. That's the definition. Um, and so I know for for our parish, it's something that we'd like to work on striving and and pushing forward, as opposed to people just thinking it's it's about it's one dimensional. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to I think Owen to take us through ownership. Thank you, Perry. Uh, and I would uh, like to add to what Perry said that uh, one of the things we have started to do uh, over the past few months uh, at St. George is start our stewardship meetings with a review of the de definition of stewardship, as uh, Perry set out. Uh, we all need to be reminded that it's not just about money. And one of the aspects uh, underlying stewardship is ownership. And there are a couple of uh, aspects to ownership. The first is, as this slide indicates, that um, you you need your parish leaders to have ownership of what uh, your stewardship plan is. Whatever it may be, the not only the stewardship chair, but the entire committee has to own it. And then the parish council has to own it and then take it to the congregation at large and indicate to them how they need to take 
ownership of, uh, of your plan, excuse me. So you have the commitment from the priest, you have the parish council, you have the stewardship committee. Uh, eventually, it will uh, go throughout your, your parish, and that's accomplished by your frequent and inviting communications. Uh, the next slide for a moment there. Uh, and as this indicates, there are aspects uh, that are elements underlying ownership that we have to constantly remind ourselves of confidentiality, transparency, accountability, and the most important perhaps are uh, is showing appreciation, acknowledging and celebrating what uh, the people in the parish are doing. Uh, and of course, what they're doing uh, is getting engaged. And just as I'm about to turn this over to Myra to talk about engagement, I would ask that everyone on this call and everyone that you know who has been participating to take ownership of these Tuesday night calls and take the survey that was sent out. <laughs> that was my pitch. Uh, Myra, if you will take over uh, on engagement. Thank you, Owen. Thank you, Perry. Uh, engagement is the core of just absolutely, uh, absolutely everything that happens uh, in the church. And without engagement, there is not the connection. People are not connected to people. People are not connected to purpose. Um, and we need to really find, find ways to get people engaged. And what really, or what, what really, really works is just to be absolutely welcoming and to talk with people and to introduce yourself and to ask about, you know, their interests and try to figure out if there's, you know, a way for them to be involved in the ministries, uh, in the community outreach, in fellowship, in educational, in all, in all of those aspects um, that go on at, uh, at the church. Uh, next slide. And so it's connect to people. We can each connect to people and then introduce uh, the people we know and connect to to other people and connect to purpose. Because after all, we are at church to, for our faith, for our connection with God and for our connection to humanity. And so, um, Engagement is just uh, totally, totally crucial. The next slide. Hey, Myra, can I jump in here just for sure. a comment? comment? I, I think this is an important slide to think about with engagement because sometimes we we think about these things as, as just one concept. But if you think about them as three concepts, you know, how can I connect to someone, whether it's someone new to the community, someone who hasn't been to my community in a while, or someone who's there in my community and and maybe um, you know wants to be more more active, or we'd love to see that person be more active, or that you know that's you connecting with someone. And then the second bucket is really connecting people to new people or to other people in the in the parish, with the idea that you know maybe getting them involved in in a ministry or getting them involved in you know some some community uh, program or or just having people that live close by introducing them. The idea of com creating community. And then the third is, as Myra said, the important aspect of, of why we come to church, why, you know, living our religion and, and reminding people that's why we're there. If you think about things that you can do in your parishes that fall into, you know, multiple buckets like this, I, I think that is what we were trying to strive in the messaging of engagement. You'll, you'll create a, a much stronger culture of, of people wanting to participate and be part of your, your parish. That's the idea. 
Thank you. Sorry, Myra, back to you. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, that, next slide. So ways to connect, as, as Perry mentioned, a variety of ministries and programs that engage parishioners. And again, solicit and welcome ideas for new ministries and, and uh, give new ministries a chance. Uh, there are there are some times when we think, oh no, this is not going to work, or or whatever the case may be, and and what we have found is that ministries that start um, just kind of flourish on their own because a particular person has an interest in a particular thing, and one of the ministries at our parish that completely has flourished and is just absolutely wonderful, uh, uh, along with any number of others, is a bicycle project where, and, and we have the Metropolis to also thank for that because there was a grant that was provided by the Metropolis to, uh, for seed money on that project. But this young man is just interested in uh, helping the homeless and has solicited from the parish and from friends and neighbors that they donate their bikes that they're not using. And he has created a team, they fix the bikes and then they give them to the homeless. And this provides a means of transportation for those, for those people who, they may, they may need to go for a job interview or to do some grocery shopping or whatever it is that they need. But it, it grew because somebody had an interest. And both the metropolis and the parish supported that interest. And it has flourished. And it is just absolutely wonderful. So, um, and let's also encourage participation of everybody, not only those who of us who are cradle Orthodox, but everybody who steps in the door, whether they're Orthodox or not, whether they're with a spouse with Orthodox and they're not, whatever the case may be, just make people feel welcome. And with that, and there is nothing, you know, it's, it's all about engagement, the rest follows. The rest absolutely follows. Uh, so um, next, I think um, we we did uh, talk a little bit about this. Again, uh, purpose, why are we at the church? Uh, connect people to to Jesus. And, um, and that is obviously a, a large part of that is the is the job of our parish priests. But we as lay people also, engage in that and and also be a part of showing by example what it's like to to be christian and to and to provide service and be humble and not be boastful and and a lot of those things so with that um i think that's the last slide for this right generosity dimitri Yes, thanks, Myra. Uh, and uh, that was a great segue into generosity. Really, from engagement, uh, everything flows. And uh, that's what makes engagement, I also believe, helps make generous people. And uh, generosity, as we're saying here, is a reflection of our gratitude that we have for, to God for the gifts he's given us. Uh, and uh, obviously, God himself is a great example of generosity. He gave uh, his own son to us uh, to save us. Uh, so that is uh, something that we should always keep in mind uh, as far as generosity is concerned, that, that the example of God and his son, Jesus Christ, that he had given everything, including his life, for us. Also, we should always remember that everything we have is because of him, not because of us. So we have, since we call ourselves Christians, and we try to imitate 
our Lord. Generosity should be our life. We should live generous lives. So with everything we do and everything we say, uh, with our actions and even with our words, we should speak generously. So on the next slide, we'd like to remind everybody again, as we spoke in the past, that we demonstrate our love to God and the priority that God has in our lives and his church, but how we act. So we need to encourage ourselves and by doing so others that we think of God and his church from what from from from, from it should be the first priority in our lives. So when, when we give something, it should be from uh, not from what's left over, but should make it from part of, of, of actually the first fruits of our efforts. Um, as we see, as you see here in this slide, uh, God does not need anything from us. <laughs> it's what we need from him. Uh, but it's uh, how we, how we, it's, 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 it's how we, it makes us prioritize God in our lives as, 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 as to be the first thing. So remember, it's not about writing a check. It's about our, the, uh, how we feel about when we write a check. And uh, also remember that um, um, sacrificial giving should be our goal when we give something to the church and to the God and to, to, the, to the work of the church that does, the, the, the work that the church does, um, maybe it will be really beneficial if it hurts a little bit. It makes us think more about it. So uh, the fingers, as you can see in that proverb, uh, just basically let go is the heart that does all the giving. And I think that there's one more slide here. Uh, the good thing about generosity, it's something that can be taught. Like we said before, we're not born with generosity genes, maybe, but we learn generosity from uh, by seeing others and uh, others helping us to become generous. So it's up to us then to make the people around us, including ourselves, let's start with ourselves first, um, to, to be more generous than what we may be today. Uh, let's educate, let's talk about generosity. Let's um, make sure that everybody in, from, from the top down uh, demonstrates that, again, by what they say, by what they do, by what they give. Let's have some uh, initiatives that uh, will show that they reflect the mission and the vision and the goals of the Paris so that people can respond generously towards these goals. And also, let's promote this attitude of gratitude. Let's, um, let's think about how we uh, solicit money, perhaps. Let's not be afraid to tell people how we do, you know, how to do it. Uh, again, from the first fruits of the labor. And I would like to leave also, I think that's the last slide. When we, the, the different ways of asking for something, uh, primarily money in this case, but also time and talent, um, is that the, the right way to promote generosity? And what I'd like to leave everybody with this question, <laughs> are traits that it's a common occurrence in our church, the right way to promote and increase generosity in our parishes? And I think that's all that uh, there is regarding generosity, right, at this point. Yes. I don't know what's next. Right. So yes, that's all I have to say regarding generosity. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Dimitri. 
and then Perry and Owen. Uh, the next session is going to be full group sharing and developing and implementing goals. As Perry said, initially, this past year in 2023, we talked a lot about uh, developing goals and uh, promoting goals within the parish. And we'd like to hear some of what it is that um, has happened during the past year in your parishes with regard to goals and 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 uh, where where you may where, where you may be. So Perry, if you can um, stop the slide. Okay. Um, feel free to raise your hands. I think all of you know how to do that. And I see Rula. Uh, uh, Rula has raised her hand. Karis, Rula. I did it old school. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Um, I am one of the representatives and hopefully the other Rula, Rula times two will uh, stick with us from St. George. Um, well, from the first meeting, Myra and Owen uh, asked me to join and listen in um, a year ago, I think in January. So this is my year anniversary. Um, just to listen in and hear. And that meeting, we went into breakout rooms and uh, immediately I felt comfortable to talk. And I think I was in the room with uh, Peter uh, at my very first time. And we started talking about communication and naturally my brain started working uh, about how our communication was uh, at St. George. Um, in some ways, communication was fine at St. George, but in other ways, I, I, whether I was naive or I just wasn't reaching out to communicate, I felt there was something missing. Um, so we came together, we talked, and um, in that meeting, it just struck me that some ministries, uh, we just don't talk to each other. Uh, and so I I felt very comfortable talking in the breakout rooms. And after the we went came back as a whole group, we shared out. I felt comfortable sharing out. And I called Myra that evening, and I said, Myra, how I I had this like thing pop into my head about the ministry leads not talking. And all of a sudden Myra's like, oh my goodness, I cannot believe you got that from your first meeting. She's like, we've been thinking about that. And we, Myra and I hadn't talked. So she said, since it came naturally to you, take it, go ahead and take it. Well, I started working on it with guidance with Myra and Owen. Uh, it finally came um, together it took a while, um, you know, try, we had the 100 year gala, as you know, there was a lot going on at St. George, getting Father Chris on board, getting our parish council on board, not on board, like, no, they, I, we don't want to do it and convincing them the time to sit them down to actually tell them the idea of getting the ministries together, because there was some pushback uh, in the beginning when I would first mention it, uh, because they're like, oh, we do that. We do that. We get the calendar working and everybody puts everything on the calendar and we move on. And I said, that's not what I'm actually asking. The calendar is great, but we need some communication. Um, and it was funny that one of our parish council members didn't even know some of the ministries existed. So that was a problem in itself. Um, so we finally got together. Uh, I invited 24 ministry leads uh, to our first quarterly meeting. 17 came. And it was the coldest day of the year. It was Martin Luther King where the schools were closed. Uh, so we scrambled and we offered Zoom as uh, as an option. So we didn't have to meet at the church and 17. But out of the 17 uh, that showed up, I mean, out of the 24 that um, the missing ones out of that, one, everyone reached out to me prior to the coldest day of the year and told me why they weren't able to make it and they couldn't find a representative. Uh, only one person, one lead did not show up. So that was good statistics for my very first time, um, we thought. Uh, prior to the meeting, um, I sent out, hey, we're going to have this meeting. Here's something, here are four bullet points for you to think about not one was a calendar. One of my bullet points was not a calendar. It was more like 
tell us what you've done. Tell us what you need help with and see if you have challenges. Tell us what you envision 2024 to be some goals, uh, a goal. Uh, and once I, I sent that out, I also sent an agenda out with minutes. You have so many minutes to talk. The bulk of it is going to be you telling us uh, there was, we had an hour and a half. So I pointed that out um, on the agenda prior to our meeting. Um, and we only went 10 minutes over for a bunch of Greeks in a room going 10 minutes <laughs> over. It was, it was, that was a success. Um, but afterwards I got a couple of texts, which, you know, what made me feel like it was, um, it was a successful meeting. Of course, there were, there were things that uh, when you reflect things that you, um, I think I could have changed, but um, it was a successful meeting. Everyone got a chance to talk, uh, to tell us their vision, their goal. Um, and we, we are setting to meet again after Easter, uh, because we want to meet at, we're going to try and meet four times a year, uh, quarterly. We're going to try and we're going to wait till after Easter. But yesterday we had another meeting and, uh, uh, father Chris said, you know, this could work together. Something came up in that meeting. This could work together with uh, the ministry leads there. Rula brought everybody together. So he's now even thinking, hey, here's a bullet point that we could add to the ministry leads meeting that we are, are going to have again um, later on this year. So, um, you know, now my next step is to have the next meeting. And I want to have these leads um communicate what happened in um, this meeting and eventually maybe bringing um, everyone together or representatives besides the leads from their committees. Um, so it's still kind of working in my head for um, the next steps, but I, I we were pleased. We were pleased at, at this level um, to bring us together. So that's my story. That's great. Really great. It really, really went extremely well. And participation was wonderful at that meeting. Uh, any questions for Rula? Okay. I, do, Rula. I forgot to add one thing. Uh, after we had the meeting, I was taking notes during the meeting. I sent out the notes immediately while it was fresh in my in everyone's mind to make sure I captured everybody's points. And I did get some feedback on that as well uh, for corrections uh, or other things. But uh, immediately, I didn't wait for the uh, the notes to go out because um, I was doing it live anyway. Rula, maybe just to comment, I, I thought that uh, thanks for sharing the story. It's great. Um, what I really like about it is it kind of falls into the connecting people to people. I mean, the, the concept of bringing people across the parish together learning about what's going on in the parish, sharing that kind of information. I'm sure there was a lot of new things that people were doing that other people didn't know, and maybe that's going to grow participation in different ministries and get more people involved and give people ideas. That That is a a great example of engagement and, and better communication kind of in the ownership category. So um, I think at my prior parish, we did this council of ministries where we brought all the ministry heads together uh, periodically to do the same kind of thing. And and it all you, you always learn something new. You always meet new new people through it. It's a nice it's a nice a uh, nice idea. Good job. Thank you. I uh, you triggered something that I I should mention. One of the ministry leads at the meeting asked another ministry lead if they could join in on something uh, together. So they did. They it naturally happened. Great, thank you, Rula. Would somebody else like to share um, a goal, an experience? Uh, Dimitri. Hi, thanks, thanks, Myra. Uh, Dimitri Fardals from Saint Demetrius in Libertyville. Uh, we were very fortunate last year that Perry was able to help us craft a vision and mission statement and our goals. So we established four goals for the year. And uh, we didn't hit all of them, but we tried to, to work through them. Uh, first was to grow attendance through ministry participation and stewardship. Still working on that. Um, 
it, it is a challenge. There's no question about that. Uh, another part kind of, uh, kind of uh, similar to Rula's is to increase our communica uh, communications into the community. And what we started doing, uh, Father Thomas sends out a weekly kind of bulletin in regards to uh, the divine liturgy and some of the things that are going on. But we're also we also started a quarterly newsletter to the community, again, to communicate with them. Uh, let them know what's going on, uh, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, one of our festivals, one of our many festivals that we have, or uh, Father has some uh, Bible study type classes, uh, any number of things, and, and asking for help as well, to give them an opportunity, throwing out a couple of things and saying, if you're interested in this, we're looking for people to be involved in, you know, some activity. Uh, another thing that we're trying to do as part of our community is to start a choir. And you talk about engagement. And that's part of the idea is to get people more engaged uh, if they can participate in the Divine Liturgy and other services. We, we certainly want to welcome them to that. Um, we also want to increase our charitable efforts. Our Philopta host kind of drives our charitable efforts, but it's not just Philopta host. It's the community that, that gets involved. They lead us. But that doesn't. It's doing that. Community. This patient that we. Did we lose Demetria or is it just my, is it my? Uh, uh, it's frozen. Okay. 20. Dimitri, frozen. You're, uh, you're cutting in and out and you're frozen, so. Um, maybe we can get back to Dimitri when um, the computer straightens out, so. Uh, okay, anybody else who would like to, uh, th those are, are quite a few activities going on uh, at St. Demetrius. Did I knock No, no, it, it, it got frozen. Your screen was frozen. So okay. go ahead, finish. Now. <laughs> yeah, no, go ahead, finish, please. Sorry. <laughs> you, would you like to continue? No, that's pretty much it i think that again gives you an idea and again it's it's a beginning of the process and and we know that it's ongoing we're not we're not nowhere near done it's quite ambitious all of the initiatives that uh, your church has taken on that's great thank you any questions for dimitri No, just to, just to echo that, I think um, for those of you who are thinking about how to change things within your parishes, you know, it does take time. Things don't change overnight. Um, so patience is, is, is part of it. But I also think the reason we do goals and the reason we talk about goals is because it does give us something to communicate to our priest, to our parish council about what we want to achieve, how we want to achieve it, why we want to achieve it. And, and that buy-in, hopefully, that's the ownership concept, hopefully transfers into, into moving things along over time. And, and goals obviously also give you an opportunity to look back at your progress and track. Um, and that's, that's always good. And, and you can adjust them as you go along if you need to. So uh, I think it's great. Thank you, Perry. Uh, anyone else would like to share? Uh, their goals or experiences with developing and implementing uh, Rula, uh, Arceo, and then Joyce. Hi, thank you so much for um, allowing me to be here today. This is very exciting to listen in and learn from everyone else. I'm uh, from St. George, Rula Arceo, and I uh, Back in September, we started talking about at St. George, how can we, and I 
kind of going back into the theme of this uh, session today, how can we engage our youth to feel their own ownership within the church, their spiritual home today and in the future? So we decided to work on creating a Young Stewards of St. George. And um, we're very excited. We launched that in January of 2024. Um, it's taken a lot of uh, commitment from our our subcommittee and um, people. So we have a great team of uh, people working on this together. Um, we've we in January we had Father Chris uh, launch the ministry to the parish uh, after Divine Liturgy at the Solea talked about um, the purpose behind the ministry and. I'd like to share with you on that same day is when we uh, provided a sign-up sheet to the parents, to the children, uh, so that they can sign up for this. And also um, we created a Q&A and um, we'll do some fun recognition ceremony for them in actually about a week and a half. And I'll share a little bit about that. Uh, this is still a work in progress. So although we've launched, we're still working on what are the next steps af after um, after the recognition ceremony, different things that we can help engage the young stewards. Um, but I'd like to share my screen here. So let me know if you can see my screen. Okay, please let me know if you can see uh, the St. Yes. George Greek Orthodox Young Stewards. Perfect. Okay, so this is the sign up sheet that we created. Um, as you can see on the top, uh, we made it specifically for the young stewards. We added uh, stewardship on here because, of course, this is this is a, a an arm of the stewardship committee. Um, our grateful and loving response to God's love, grace, and gift to us. We want, you know, we're a family, so we wanted to to say, dear Saint George family, and then of course our uh, clergy. Parish Council Stewardship Com Committee um, is the one that's inviting our young stewards to join the Young Stewardship of St. George. Uh, here is what I'd like to spend a little bit of time on. It explains the purpose behind our ministry, um, behind the young stewards. It brings the spirit of stewardship and a great sense of community to the, young, uh, to the youth. We will educate our young stewards about the importance of personal generosity in ways that they can offer uh, and engage with their communities, church, and foster a sense of ownership of their life commitments and the shared responsibility to their to their home in our spiritual. I'm sorry to to have in our spiritual home. So aside from explaining that, um, as I mentioned, we're having a kickoff celebration uh, to celebrate all those young stewards that have signed up for for the program um it's on uh, february 18th it will follow it will be following divine liturgy um where father chris will provide a keepsake rock and i'll show that to you in just a moment uh to our to our uh children to everybody that signed up and after that they we will head over to the saint george community center where we'll have a celebratory lunch for all the kids so we plan on having uh, a tables right in the middle of the community center just for the children uh, where they get to feel special that day. This is something for them. Um, although they, they don't have to sign up by February 18th, they can become young stewards anytime throughout the year. Um, so we did want to make sure that on the sign up sheet, they understood that young stewards do not need to be present on February 18th to become um, um, part of the ministry. Similar to the stewardship, young stewards of St. George should provide their time, talent, and treasures for community, church, and faith. You know, although we're talking about children that could be anywhere from the age of four to 18, everybody, not only the adults, but everyone has uh, true talents um, that we can all learn from. And so that's the purpose behind this as well. Here is where the children, we'd like our uh, the children to actually fill out this portion of the form with their name, their age, grade, any, anything they'd like to pledge. Um, you know, stewardship, of course, we've talked about earlier that it's not just about the money and it's not, um, it, it, that is not the main purpose, 
That's why we wanted to make sure that we had a disclosure at the bottom that says monetary donations can be as little as a dollar. And it really should be a donation from the child where they've uh, collected, whether it was from their birthday, Christmas, uh, chores that they've done at home. And this is something that they're giving to the church. And again, it's not about the money. So it's, it's as little as a dollar is all we're asking for. It is a way for the youth to experience the joy of giving and ownership of their spiritual home. Uh, donations are confidential. We also wanted them to notate on this form that uh, they either currently participate or would like to give their time and talent to any of these current ministries that we have in place. Above and beyond that, we want their parents' contact information so that as we schedule events throughout the year, meetings, uh, activities for the children, that we can communicate with the parents so that they're fully aware. Before I move on uh, to the question and answers, I, I know this is a lot on the sign-up sheet, so I wanted to see if anybody had any questions for me. Okay. I'm going to move on to the question of uh, the Q&A. So as, as mentioned earlier, this is a new ministry, so we want parents and anyone to really understand the meaning behind this new ministry. Uh, so the Q&A provides more information about the purpose, how to get involved, and how to how uh, we they can support the youth of the church. So the first question is, what is the Young Stewards of St. George? Uh, truly, it's been developed uh, by the Stewardship Committee, uh, and it's tended to bring the spirit of stewardship to the youth of the church. As mentioned earlier, the celebration uh, ceremony recognition to the new members will happen on the 18th of February. Number two, what is the purpose of the Young Stewards Ministry is exactly what we outlined on the sign-up sheet in that second paragraph, so I'm not going to review that again. Uh, number three, how old does the child have to be to be a, become a Young Steward? So we really wanted to gear the, the kids from four to 18. After 18, they become adults, right? So this is a young stewards uh, ministry, but the young steward ministry is open to anybody that's interested. So we, we don't want to discourage anybody that wants to attend. How do I get children, my child or children involved? Uh, you know, we, we wanted to encourage the sign up sheet, um, going online, getting, um, uh, talking to us uh, at the uh, committee level, uh, any way they, they want to talk to us. What is uh, what if the my child is not signed up by February 18th? Again, that's going back to don't worry about it. Your child can still participate in the Young Stewards. Just complete a sign up sheet as soon as possible. Uh, does my child need to meet an annual stewardship commitment as adults do? And so the answer is no. But we do want to educate them through throughout the year so that they can understand what stewardship really means and include which includes their time, talent, and treasures. Number seven, do these part, uh, do those participating in the Young Stewards have any responsibilities? So it will be our expectation um, that they participate in ed ed educational activities, which, as I mentioned earlier, are things that we're um, working on today for the future, for the rest of the 2024. And um, we're also looking for them to pick a generosity project of their own choosing. And more than likely, this will be one of the first activities that our first meetings we're going to have with them soon after the recognition ceremony. Have them come together, provide us their feedback on what they want to see this ministry provide for them, but also uh, provide or choose a project that they would like to um, provide their gen generosity and what uh, for non for profit organization, for example. Um, we're looking at different ways of in, um, getting our parish council potentially involved in this as well. Um, number eight, how can I support the Young Stewards Ministry as a parent? So what we really want parents to do is primarily be engaged in uh, their children in conversations about stewardship at home. So after kids come back from our meetings. We're hoping that the, the parents will, will engage the children and you know tell us what, what you guys did today and have that conversation at home. Uh, over the course of the year, St. George will supply parents with educational material to support and guide conversations with their children. Uh, in the long run, what does Young Stewards Ministry hope to achieve? 
being that it's our first year in the program, the Young Stewards Ministries goals are intentionally modest. Um, so, but in the long uh, run, the desire of the ministry is to educate and engage our youth today to see themselves as leaders of the community and church in the future. So not just today, but you know, for the next hundred years. Um, if my child joins the Young Stewards, is he or she considered a steward of St. George like adult stewards? And so, although different, but they sh our children should feel just as much ownership, engagement, time, you know, everything that the parents feel, they should feel the same way. They should walk into the church feeling like this is mine. Um, so yes, all stewards, regardless of age, are seen as equals in their shared responsibilities to their communities and church, regardless. Um, I was mentioning earlier that we uh, are doing the um, celebration, recognition celebration on February 18th. Uh, we would really like for the children to have something provided uh, to them by by Father Chris uh, that will that hopefully they will keep forever um, and uh, somewhere in their room on their desk on a bookshelf. Uh, it, and so we decided to do a Young Stewards Keepsake Rock. It's about two to three inches, two sided rock that we are different colors and different sizes. The front will say, uh, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church. And on the back, it will say, Young Stewards of St. George. We actually just received them a couple of days ago, so I was able to take a picture of a few of them, just so you could see. So that's the back, that's the front. And so as you can see, there are different sizes and colors as well. Um, and so hopefully they'll, again, keep this forever and pass it down to their children and grandchildren, potentially. Um, that's all I've got, but let me know if you have any questions, please. Thank you, Rula. If you can, uh, okay, that, that's oh. great. Yeah, there we go. Uh, thank you. So, uh, thank you so very much. Any questions for Rula? Father Jim? I, I can't tell you how much I love this idea. And I want, if you don't mind, I, I'd love to be able to share it. Uh, more broadly, uh, I'll get in touch with you. But um, something that that we we have the adults do in parishes where they want to do it is um, the priest takes the uh, commitment cards into the altar and reads a prayer over them. That might be on that day when you have the lunch. You might want to consider. There's a prayer in actually the handbook, uh, so you don't have to make up a prayer. Mention to Father Chris if it's something he thinks. I never like to tell priests what to do. Um, <laughs> Something that the kids, you know, extra special, their cards go into the altar and, and it becomes like a, a really special day as long as they're having the lunch downstairs. Just something popped into my head, but this is great. I'm really impressed. Thank you. Ruth. And and we will share, we will share it when I send out um, the slides and everything else through the Metropolis. We'll, we'll include this. A couple of people have asked for, for that. So yeah, absolutely. Okay, any, any other questions? Dimitri. I just want to say it, it's wonderful. Uh, God bless your efforts. I uh, can't wait to hear the results. I just, I think it's a great, great thing you're doing. Thank you. And actually, I, I, I'm happy to report that as, so we launched January 7th. So it's been uh, four or five weeks now. Um, and we're, we already have 31 uh, children signed up so far. So I think that's a that's a great start. Terrific. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rula. Uh, would anyone else like to share? Okay. Um I think then maybe we can move on uh, to the next to the next topic and uh, let's see. Oh, we have six minutes. <laughs> so yeah. maybe Myra in the last six minutes. I think the idea was to get some ideas for Correct. areas that people would like us to focus on as we move forward with these Tuesday night meeting to monthly Tuesday night meetings. So um, just opening up to the floor, uh, ideas, uh, topics, suggestions. Oh, did you want to talk about? Did you want to talk about uh, plan giving? I think you talked to Melpo, right? Owen. Owen. Uh, 
cool? Uh, no, I, okay. I, I, not, I have not talked to Melpo about plan to giving. Okay, okay, we we, we just um had brought on board a, a person to uh, help parishes with their plan giving efforts. So maybe that's something you could put on. She's she's in uh, out of Minneapolis, but working for the GOA, and she, it's all about the parishes to help them with their plan giving efforts. So everything. So maybe you can put that on the on the future agenda yeah. if yeah. it's possible. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. And and I I will yeah. make a pitch once again uh about the survey that did go out that is an opportunity to uh let us know uh about topics uh frequency how you would like uh communications to go um and we may be asking in case you received it the the mailing list was only to people whose emails we have for these tuesday nights it's not open to uh everyone in the metropolis um because we wanted the reactions of those people who have participated in one way or another um we may be sending out the survey a second time just in case it got buried in the uh, your inbox. I know that doesn't happen to anyone except me, but <laughs> just in case. Other ideas, topics, suggestions? Perry, this is Pete Nassis from St. Athanasius. I, uh, I did reply to the survey, Owen, so it did not get lost in my email. Okay, so it did not. <laughs> Some, I, like what this ruler did now, sharing best practices. I mean, for us to learn, I always tell people, you don't need to recreate the wheel. You know, what can we learn from each other? What's worked well? And maybe you pick a topic and say, okay, bring, let's talk about three or four best practices for a topic. And then we can kind of and build on that. And that would be useful for me. I, and Rula, I always wanted to ask if you could send that information to us because we've talked about youth at our parish and you know i pulled down from the archdiocese and the metropolis youth education materials off the of stewardship but it's hard to get people to move forward i don't have influence over all the people in the parish to get things done but and you know how do you build consensus among all the organizations that's something i struggle with of getting the parish council the stewardship committee and the priests all aligned moving in the same direction and that's been difficult at times but if we could share best practices, I think that would be great on, on different topics. Great, Pete. Thank you. Or barriers. What are the, some of the barriers we have out there to our success? Um, going with, oh, sorry. Uh, going with what Peter just said, I enjoyed um, listening to our guest speakers uh, with their story. Uh, and if we could get uh, vibrant guest speakers, um, again, on those topics, you know, to combine it or not, their story is, uh, you learn from other people's stories and you feel more connected. So I'd, I'd enjoy a, a few of those again. Very good. Thank you. I know I'm not local. Could I butt in again? Um, I, I hear people talk a lot at a national level about, um, electronic giving, and it's changing almost daily. There, the, we started out with uh, uh, online giving through uh, your check, checking account, and then we had online giving through the parish website. But we have to keep making it easier because it has to be as easy as possible. Uh, the, especially the younger the people are, the more they want things like Venmo and Zelle. They want it to be quick and easy. Uh, you know, with our care cards, we don't even, we just tap them and the money comes out. We just have to make it as easy as possible. Maybe if we could have someone come on and to talk about um, electronic giving and move us to the next step forward. Because I think we've all, most of our parishes have initiated some kind of electronic giving, but there's so many ways to do it now with QR codes and text giving and, and Zelle and, and, and Venmo and everything. Maybe that's something we could explore uh, and kind of expedite because I think we all kind of plateaued on, on um, electronic giving. And if I could uh, piggyback on what Father Jim just said, uh, we well we have uh, a very talented person at our parish. Uh, 
we there's so many ways to give we electronically we've we've got that down then the question is but how does it get recorded uh you know does wh what do you put there donation well i wanted to give stewardship but i i i did the wrong drop down uh all of the l little traps uh I think it would be good to discuss them and how to avoid them. Great idea. Thanks, Father. Thanks, Owen. Okay, well, if you, I, if you have any, it's eight o'clock. I know I have to run, um, but what, if we have any other ideas, maybe the survey is the best vehicle. Um, and uh, uh, Myra, I don't know, do we, uh, anything else that we want to cover tonight? Uh, I, I don't uh, believe so. Uh, we are, obviously, the purpose of this uh, last point uh, in terms of the discussion was to get ideas, which means that if you should come up with some ideas and want to share them, please feel free to send an email. We're happy to, to explore. We will be getting together to try to work things through and try as a team um, to try to figure out to plan for the rest of the year. We have not yet done so, so we cannot tell you exactly what's gonna happen in March. Uh, and I believe that date is March 5th. So, but we will keep you posted and we'll see how things uh, develop. Dimitri? Uh, are we also looking for uh, some good people or a few good men, women? Yes, absolutely. And I see Christina is, is on. Thank you, Christina. If you know of anybody who would be interested in being part of the team for uh, stewardship for the SSNF team, or if you are interested in being part of the SSNF team, we would uh, totally love it. Um, you know, it is part, part of what we are going to be grappling with and talking about is how do we reach out to the parishes in addition to what it is that we're doing Tuesday night meetings? You know, do we connect with parishes by having meetings at the parish level via Zoom or some other way? We did that initially when we first started back in 2020, when we could not at that time meet in person, but we did meet in Zoom. So that is one one possibility if uh, people are interested or the parishes um, that that's something that we're exploring and we'll be looking at so so maybe maybe if I can jump in the, what what is SSNF and what are we talking about in terms of the team for those of you who don't know what we're talking about is the Metropolis stewardship long-term plan that the Metropolis Council approved in at the end of 2021. Um, it, it, if you, if you go back to our, I think our videos are online, but we, we, we did a summary of the plan last February. Um, and we, we, we laid out what it is and what we're working on. You know, it's a series of things in, in this last year, we've been implementing, going over the key elements of stewardship, helping you all with goal setting. That's been part of the plan, but there are other things and father Jim hit on it. Um, you know, electronic giving. There's, there's things about sharing best practices and developing portals and, and ways to do that so we can do it more seamlessly than, you know, waiting once a month on, on Tuesdays to, 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 to give one or two examples. There's, you know, campaigns that we'd like to put together. There's training that we'd like to put together. So we need, we need certain expertise. Um, we need people that can help us with educational materials. There's a youth stewardship aspect to this. So Rula, what you're doing at St. George would be wonderful. To, to think about how to implement, um, you know, across our metropolis. There's um, technology need, needs, there's marketing needs. So we, we would love to get people certainly that are willing to be part of our team and, and, you know, work with us with the parishes, but also people that have some of that expertise, help develop training, help develop um, electronic giving, things that we can, we can um, really roll out. So we're looking for some obviously some people uh, to help, but also some people with certain types of, of skills. So if you know people, or if you're interested, we would love to, to hear from you.
Well With said, that, Perry. I'm going to say good night. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you, Perry. Uh, anything else from uh, from anyone else at this point? And it's good to see Joyce. Haven't seen you in a while. Uh, Christina, uh, we need to follow up. <laughs> And uh, so many other people. Thank you, Father Marsh. And and with that, um, Father Marsh, you could say, would you mind saying a closing prayer? You're on mute if you are there. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think uh, I I don't. Oh, he cannot. He just uh, sent a note saying that he cannot. Okay, thank you so much, Father March. Um, Father Jim, <laughs> back. <laughs> In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of being together to share ideas uh, for Your glory. All these things we pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so very much. Have Thank a wonderful you, everyone. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.